What it be, y'all? Wrestling 47 back, representing for the record podcast. And today, I'm going to be finishing up my trip through Cap Dion's discography. I reviewed all the Babes and Toyland records from 1990 to 1995. Um, I reviewed Catch My Wife's All-Neal album. And today, as this is going up, it's July 9th, 2021. And today marks 20 years that this album was released. I'm talking about Cat Taz for Your Wife's debut album, Amusia, released, like I said, July 9th, 2001. Now, I already did a review on All Neil, as I've said, um, so if you want like a biography on the band, go check that out. I'll just skip right to the meat and potatoes of this review. Um, so those of that don't know, Cat Taz for Your Wife was an alternative rock band from Minneapolis. Members are Cap Beyond, guitar and vocals, Glenn Matson on drums, Keith St. Louis on bass. They got started in, I want to say, 1998, because uh, Glenn Matson is actually, was actually Cap Beyond's husband at the time. So they, that's um, how the band got started in 1998, 99. And then uh, 2000, they uh, picked up Keith St. Louis as bass player. They did like, um, I think the Reading, 2000, Reading 2000, 2001. Um, I mentioned uh, which what year it was on All Neil, but it was definitely one of those two. And uh, yeah, um, around that time they released this album. So uh, here's the cover right here. It's just a pig of Cap Bell and chilling. Uh, this is actually um, it's, you can't see it because it's cropped out, but in the full picture she's actually holding a pumpkin. Um, you can find that pic on like Google or whatever. But uh, there's a track list right there. Um, this is actually a fucking promo copy Because uh, when I bought this on like secondhand market, they didn't tell me what version it was I never even knew a version of this existed um, Yeah, I was hoping I was gonna get like an actual copy with the jewel case and everything But I got like a promo copy And as you see right there Just says Catastrophe of Amusia promo And then uh, on the back it just says, um, I don't know if you can see that you can't see it, but it says Catch Ass Free Promo, so this is a real deal. It ain't no fucking bootleg or like fake ass promo copy of Burn on CDR. Real thing, real shit. Never knew this existed, but it's definitely one of my prized possessions. Um, yeah, nobody's getting that. So, um, producer of this album was Brad Cassetto. Uh, the singles from this album are Gone Away. Um, that's the only single on the album. Uh, and that just starts off the album. And, uh, fucking man. Taking no prisoners right out the fucking gate. This shit goes dumb hard. Everybody goes the fuck in. Glenn's drumming on this track is fucking punishing. Cat's uh, vocal performance is incredible. I love the screams in between the verses. That shit is brutal. Some of the best screams she's ever delivered in her career. I love the bridge as well. Like at, between the, every set two verses, that's my shit right there. You know, living as a favor for the neighbor's guilty wife, burning like a blister on the figure of your life. Picture a dead ringer of the singer and the wife live through this encounter counting figures his demise. I mean, don't know if it's gonna be my favorite track in the album, but this is definitely top three, like no fucking question. I can hear this in rotation on like alternative rock radio and around 2001, 2002. Definitely, definitely has like that, I don't wanna say mainstream vibe, but it, it definitely sounds like something that could go commercial and blow up. Yeah, there's no video for this, unfortunately. Like I said, it was a single, but it does have a B-side called Happy Pickup Truck. You can find that on YouTube. I'll link that shit. So yeah, Gone Away. Fucking love that song. Then we got a track two, Boomerang Doll. Um, another one of my favorite tracks on the album. Um, nice change of pace. Uh, it's so songs more laid back. Um, I love the bass line on this track. Key St. Louis, very dope bassist on this album. I love, like, um, like I said, love the laid back feel to this song. Cat's harmonizing between it verses every now and then is fucking beautiful. Very atmospheric. The chorus goes hard. Like I said about Gone Away, this is another song I could hear in rotation around the time it came out. You know, um, I got your spine filed right in line with a plastic skin refined. I saw the Empress dress and in the past she passed as fine. That's a fucking dope ass chorus. Then, um, fuck it, man. Yeah. Yes, this is my favorite song on the fucking album. I don't want to spoil it already, but this is also probably my top 10 songs Cat has ever done, man. Get Go. 
Absolutely, absolutely fucking love this song. This shit is raw as fuck. Cats in their pissed off bag on this track. Uh, very punk rock instrumental. You know, never thought I had to take it. Never felt I had to fake it. Never felt the need to try all the shit you pulled. I never had your know-how. Never had your get-go. I had you figured from the get-go. And how do you get over? Now that you've blown your cover, the truth is never really over. I mean... Me reciting the fucking lines can't do the song justice. It's fucking incredible. Like I said, I think it's one of my favorite songs she's ever done. Definitely, definitely a standout track on the album. This song was also my introduction to Cat Cats Your Wife um, years ago. I heard it on the uh, the fucking Best of Babes and Toilet and Cat Beyond CD, which, um, you know, in the second half of that disc, there's a lot of Cat Cats Your Wife songs and, like, Random songs cats did, cat did before Babes in Toilet, so yeah, um, I do have that in my collection. Um, very hard to come by. Definitely happy I have that. But get go, fucking stellar track. Then we go to uh, track four, uh, Rosacea. I think that's how it's pronounced. Um, I'll be honest. When I first listened to this song, or or listened to the album, I didn't really pay much attention to this track. It, it didn't really grasp my attention. But I was, as I was revisiting the album, writing my notes, um, I fucking fell in love with this track. Cat gives one of her, in my opinion, one of her best vocal performances of her fucking life. Um, the, her falsettos in the verses are incredible. Uh, her fucking yelling in the chorus is fucking chilling. Words can't do this song justice. You know, I mean, this is something you gotta hear for yourself. I love what you said, uh, that you're absolved from the riddle you've solved, all or nothing. Used more than twice by the succubus vice while you're sleeping. That's one thing I want to mention. Cat's poetry or like her lyrics are very cryptic and abstract, which I fucking love. If you listen to um, if you listen to, like the Babes and Twins albums, um, it's you can definitely hear that. Um, but yeah, Rosacea, fucking love that song. Then we go to uh, track five, Pretty Car, another dope song. Um, another song that's really um fast in the chorus but it slows down in the verses kind of like boomerang doll um i didn't quote anything from this from the track but i fuck with it get a drink of water really quick then we'll go to the second half of the album all right so we're gonna track six and ephema that's how it's pronounced i think um not a bad song but again not one of my favorites either i didn't again didn't really quote anything then we go to track 7, Night Fight. Probably the darkest track on the album. Actually got some storytelling to it. Cat's going on about um, like a falling out in a relationship she has. Talks about killing her partner. You know, what a beautiful sight when I killed you last night. Um, again, not really, not really one of my favorites. I think it's a decent track. Then we go to track 8, Haunted. Probably my least favorite track on the album. There's nothing really I could take away from it as far as like about the song itself or just the lyrics. Um, just pretty linear kind of um, song in my opinion. Then I got track nine, Window. Again, not a bad song, but not amazing either. I do like um, what you said, you're out of place, outer space. That was some pretty good wordplay. Um, the track 10, Witter Shins. Thankfully this track, oh, this album ends on a fucking high note. This track is banging. Love the instrumental. This honestly, Sounds like something Babes in Toilet could have done around like the fucking Nemesis Sisters era, like in 95, 96. You know, the instrumental just sounds like it, as well as like Cat's spoken word delivery, how it's recorded, like how her vocals, like, or um, she does two takes, like one on the left, one on the right side of the headphones, and they're two different um, verses. You gotta hear it for yourself to know what I'm talking about. It's fucking incredible. I was really critical of Cat Beyond's fucking um, spoken word delivery on the Painkillers EP, but it sounds amazing here, man. Straight up, um, if I can get to the right page where I can quote what she said, cause her poetry on that song is insane. Your thoughts and dreams could be instantly recorded, visions of captures without time for evaluate and/or interpretation on the paper or screen, whatever format. That's like some futuristic shit right there, like being able to record dreams and shit, like fucking crazy. And that's one thing I want to bring up right now. Especially in, like Babes in Toyland, like around the like the nineties, a lot of um, Cat's lyrics she got from her dreams she would have. Um, she would like write down what she dreamed of and put it in the song. Uh, if you listen to that, um, shit like Fontanelle, you can definitely hear what I'm talking about right there. Just that really cryptic, 
abstract shit, like I said um, earlier, definitely prevalent in the Babes and Twilight albums. So yeah, Witter Shins, fucking love that song. Then um, after that, there's like some, um, there's like a bit of silence. And then at the 452 mark, there's a hint track called Rose Cello, which I'm gonna assume was a, like a, it's like just like a solo cello track. But I'm assuming it was gonna be for like, um, meant to be on Rosacea, but it got cut. Uh, well, I loved, I would have loved to hear like a second version um, of that song with the cello in it. That would have sounded amazing. Oh, and one thing I wanna mention about Witter Shins. On the best of Babies and Toilet CD, there's like a demo version of that song called Busiest Shopping Day of the Year. I'll post a link in that description as well. Uh, closing thoughts on the album. I think this is pr some pretty solid shit. Some of the songs in here are among Cap Young's fucking best. Um, especially towards the f um, front of the album. The only thing with it is like, um, to me at least, kind of takes a dip towards the, the second, towards the second half of the album. But it picks back up with like, um, you know, the closing track. Um, in 2016, um, I'm assuming Cap Young herself put this out, but um, a label called Do Yourself In put out like a rarities um, from this album called Amnesia. You can find that on like streaming services and YouTube. I'll post a link to that as well. It's like, um, you know, it's like a demo versions of songs on this album, radio sessions, outtakes. There's one song in particular I fucking love that, I, um, you know, I just listened to it last night because I never really paid attention um, to like the fucking outtakes. But uh, there's one song um, from that compilation called Dragon Lady. Fucking love that song. That definitely you could definitely hear that being on this album. I'll link that as well. But yeah, um, if I had to give this a rating, I'm giving it three and a half. I'm giving it a three point five out of five. I think it's a solid album. Top three favorite tracks. Going from three down to one, boomerang doll, gone away, and get go. So um, yeah, that is Catastrophe West and Musia. That is gonna wrap it up from a Capion Babes and Twin Catastrophe West reviews. Thank y'all for watching. This has been a fucking this has been fucking fun reviewing on these albums because Capion is like top five musician ever for me. Needs to get her fucking flowers while she's still breathing because. She's a fucking incredible musician, um, very unique style. Um, I had fun reviewing all these albums because nobody's gonna do it. Nobody's gonna do it. She's so fucking underrated. I had to come. I had to come out and do it myself. That's why I'm happy I started this for the record podcast. I wanna, you know, give props to uh, the musicians I love that wouldn't get them otherwise. Um, I do plan on doing a Capio in the Skyfree ranking sometime this year. Don't know when, but I definitely will be doing that. So I thank y'all for watching, and um, tune in tomorrow night for the record podcast is doing their weekly episode. We're going to be reviewing Insane Clown Posse, Sideshow EPs, Beverly Kills 50187, The Terror Wheel, and Tunnel of Love, all in one video. That's going to be fucking dope. So thank y'all for watching. I'll see y'all tomorrow night. Peace.